Well, hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us on this barrel pick. If you'd like to join uh, my little whiskey club, it's not really much. It's just uh, I pick barrels for retailers, and then I send an email out, and then you buy them. So there's no dues or anything like that anymore. Just, um, just me picking barrels for retailers so like if you'd like to join that you'll find like you'll find like a uh link you'll find a link in the descriptions to the form you get you can just sign up for it uh so nice and easy simple basic you know name and address email address and boom i send an email boom you buy the barrel boom you don't buy the barrel whatever but I'm just here picking barrels because I love whiskey, and I've never, I haven't really, I've always been picking barrels with, um, you know, for like bourbon and beyond or for charities. And so I, you know, this past year I decided to start doing some stuff on my own, and that's what this is. And I'll tell you, one of my favorites to pick is Jack Daniels. Jack Daniels, to me, is one of the one of the top five. Uh, barrels to pick because they only put out the best barrels for you. That's not always the case with distillers. Jack Daniels to me always puts out the best barrels, and you have always have like a really kind of thick, really rich uh, flavor profile. Some of the best, uh, the best Jack Daniels I've ever had has always been like barrel picks. I like Sinatra. I like those some of their other uh, higher end products, but. Uh, the barrel picks have always been really, really good. And it's on that note, I want to bring in uh, the master distiller for uh, Jack Daniels, Chris Fletcher. How you doing, sir? I'm great, Fred. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. It's good to see you. I mean, it's you've been you've been on the job for how long now? Was it six months? Yeah, a little over. It's been since October 1st. So, um, you know, settling in, I guess, you know, with the way the world has been, you know, the last yeah. the, the last year plus, uh, it, I, it seems weird to say, you know, settling in. But, um, sure. but you know, certainly things we, we've seen things, you know, starting to turn back around for us here at the distillery. We've got visitors here. Um, it's a little bit modified, looks and feels a little different, but. Uh, but I couldn't be more excited to be in this role and and to be here and and tasting some of our great single barrel with you. Are you how many single barrels a week are you doing? It, it depends. Um, with with the barrel proof, we only do um, really a month, maybe about ten or twelve for for a whole month. Um, that's about it. Typically, um, it varies. Our ninety four proof, our standard single barrel select. Um, you know, we do more of those, um, that's more readily available. Um, so there's quite a few more of those and, um, you know, it's been our, our Jack Daniels single barrels as a whole, um, you know, and even including our, our single barrel rye, it, it's sort of that, I kind of related to that unknown version of Jack Daniels. There's so many people that don't even know we do single barrel whiskey. And, um, I think it's just a absolute sweet spot for, for what we do. Uh, hopefully you'll agree when we jump into these barrels. Uh, but it's amazing to see people, you know, as they are, are in their whiskey journey and they're trying different things and new things, it, they feel like they discover something from Jack Daniels with single barrel. Um, so, um, you know, it's, it's been really successful and it, it's one of the things that I love the most about what, what I do. I always, I always tell people, uh, and it surprises them about like, uh, you know, they, I always feel like people want me to bash Jack Daniels because, you know, it's not branded as a bourbon and and uh and like i always feel like they want me to bash them and i'm like i love jack daniels i think it's a great brand and i think it's probably the most difficult brand to uh create so consistently like you can taste jack from from the 70s and it's very similar to jack from today and you know it's it's you're you're coming into that master distiller role and uh, keeping consistency is probably got to be right up there with everything. It, it is. It is. Uh, and thank you for that compliment. I don't know that um, I could get a bigger compliment to, for for someone to say that the whiskey is is very, very similar to what we would have made in the 70s. As you know, my grandfather would have made that whiskey in the 70s. Right. So, uh, I, you know, I, it means a lot to me. Um, you know, to, to be able to tell people we make whiskey the same way my grandfather made it. 
uh, you know, back in his day of, you know, old number seven being, you know, the only thing we really made. And, and it was allocated almost his whole career. Um, and, and think about that. And, uh, um, you know, that's what we strive for every day. Um, and, you know, the old number seven, that that 80 percent corn, 12 percent malt, 8 percent rye. Um, you know, it was the, the drink of choice of, of Frank Sinatra to, you know, we, we used to say, you know, every, you know, dive bar and, and fine dining, white tablecloth restaurants. And so, um, you know, they, they got something right back in the day. And, you know, we're, we're, we're still doing it today. And, you know, we're, we're doing some other things as well. But, you know, barrel proof is, you know, something that, that's still fairly new for us. Um, but it's exciting. And it's exciting for people to enjoy these different offerings from us. So what is your favorite, what is your favorite, like, movie that Jack Daniels has been in? I was, I was, look, I was watching a movie, the, watching a TV series the other day, like, there's Jack. Then I watched a movie, there was Jack. Do you, do you have, like, a favorite, like, pop culture uh, movie moment? Uh, you know, The Shining comes to mind. I, um, <laughs> I, I don't know why, uh, but that when you, as soon as you said movie, that immediately just went off in my brain. It's been a year since I've seen that, um, but just, you know, with Jack Nicholson there, you know, at the bar. Um, I, That's a good one. It's a good one. It, it is a good one. You know, that I, I could probably sit here and think for more. You caught me a bit off guard with that. <laughs> well, you know, uh, maybe, maybe we catch up on that. I was thinking of, like, Scarface, you know, that – moment they're like he's like drink the the cop is like pouring some jack daniels and then he gets killed so both of us are like have uh uh very ominous uh movies that are connected there but it, it's been in so many things so many bands are connected to it so many so much rock and roll so much music it's just uh it, it's fascinating uh how how it, that is, it is. yeah it, it's it's amazing um you know that our brand was adopted with you know, so many artists and, and just creative people and that energy that, that those folks have, whether it's film or, or music, um, it, 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 there's just something there. You know, I, I, you know, it, maybe it's the Tennessee thing and the music connection. I, you know, I'm not sure, but, um, you know, it, it's, it's really remarkable um, when, you, when you sit back and you think about so many people that have enjoyed our product and um, so many so many fans and friends that we've made, um, you know, through through music and through movies and pop culture that, you know, people have different ways to connecting to brands and whiskey certainly is, is um, no exception. And, you know, a lot of people will connect, you know, through, you know, country music or, you know, rock and roll music or, you know, whatever that, that is. Um, and that, that, that resonates with them. Um, and, you know, and then our job is to make sure that the quality of that product, you know, doesn't change and that, you know, when they see that square bottle black label, they know exactly what they're going to get out of that. And, you know, that's our responsibility today. But then it's also uh, kind of the fun part of being, you know, in the distiller's role in the current climate of American whiskey, where we can innovate and push things um, and, and do things and create um, different flavor profiles. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, so I want to go ahead and bring in our, uh, our guest tasters here. Uh, I've got uh, uh, Nate. Weingar from uh, from Colorado, and then I have uh, AJ Johnson from Atlanta. Hey guys, what's hey, going on? How are you doing? I'm great. I'm great. How are y'all? Doing it's good, great. man. Doing great. Congratulations on the new position, man. And good meeting Thank you. Thank you very much. No, I, I appreciate it. So let's uh, let's go ahead. I'm I'm getting the graphic situated uh, on on everybody here now. That's the that's the fun part of doing this live. You know, you get uh, you get the roaming graphics, so you're so you're watching it uh, there at home. But I want people to know who everybody is. So, boom, boom, boom. There we go. Now we're, it's not going to be the prettiest thing in the world. But you're going to know who AJ is. You're going to know who Nate. Oh, well, you know what? I take that back. That's uh, that that Nate, you're uh, you're there we go. Now, you know what? Put your right. There we go. Nate Wanger. There we go. It's better. There we go. OK, that was uh, that was brought to you by, um, you know, j I'm just making that up. But uh, OK, so we have three uh, barrels to taste. Uh, AJ, have you picked a barrel before? I have not. 
All right. And we've got, I know, I know, uh, uh, Nate is a veteran, uh, barrel picker. And we've got, um, we've got somebody here who is going to, we're going, so how this is going to work, Chris, is that we are going to taste, but, you know, I'm, we are all about like, having you kind of like uh you know take us through the process take us through the creation of these how old they are what's special about the warehouses you know all that geeky stuff that we like to uh, we like to hear yeah absolutely absolutely well the three barrels i i guess you know to kind of back up and talk a bit about jack daniel's single barrel as a whole and how we you know go about creating that then you know identifying and assuring the quality of single barrel whiskey um, because if you think about it, the whole point of what we're doing is each of these three barrels are going to taste a little bit different. Um, right. That's, that's the whole premise of barrel pick. So mm -hmm. when you, when you stop and think about, you know, you're, you're looking for quality and consistency is a big part of quality. Um, when you go into it, knowing that you're going to create a product that barrel to barrel does not taste the same by, by definition. Um, it, it's more of kind of hitting the box instead of hitting the target, if, if that makes sense. Um, you know, does it fall into what we would expect that kind of range of flavor profiles to be for single barrel Jack Daniels whiskey? So, you know, that that being said, and that kind of accepted up front, you know, we do have what we would consider a, a standard sensory sample for Jack Daniels single barrel whiskey that we have created. And we will replenish every few years um, and approve it against with our master panel and our R and D department. Um, we'll go in to make sure that we feel like, yes, this is the target for single barrel Jack Daniels whiskeys. So from there, what, what we will do pretty much, you know, every single month of production here coming out of the distillery, we're going to make sure that we're putting at least a couple of lots or entry dates um, of barrels on top floors of our barrel houses. And we have 92 barrel houses, so we've got a lot of top floor space, fortunately, that we can draw on um, to do that. Because what we want with single barrel and kind of how the Jack Daniels single barrel was developed, um, this was in 1997, so I mean, fairly new uh, product when you look at the, you know, the 150 plus year history of our distillery. The thought was, you know, single barrel product. We want to maximize the expression of each individual single barrel because that is going to therein lie the subtle differences of flavor, right? So where are we going to be able to draw whiskey from that's going to really showcase and highlight our barrel, um, which is extra special for us because we make barrels. We're also a barrel maker. We operate two cooperages within our company, um, you know, making our own barrels. And so, um, you know, what better way to showcase that than single barrel whiskey? And so, you know, quite simply, we don't cycle houses here in Lynchburg. They're going to get hot this time of year uh, and stay hot really in well into October. It can be and, really warm. And to point still. out, that's in contrast to the other Brown Foreman uh, products uh, like Woodford Reserve and Old Forester, which are in cycled warehouses, uh, Jack Daniels is not. Yes. Yep. Very good point, Fred. And and you know, you know, I don't want to say right or wrong for sure. Chris Morris would be calling me up and, and and telling me about it. But just what we decided to do in Lynchburg here, um, we've we've experimented with cycling houses. I I can promise you in the mid '60s. We were cycling barrel houses here and seeing how it would impact our, the flavor of our whiskey. Um, you know, and, and certainly you do see some changes. You do see some extraction moving more quickly um, and things like that. But ultimately, just for what we do, what our flavor is, um, what we saw going on. And we, we've done cycling experiments, I mean, as recent as the early 2000s. Um, so look, we, we get, we've done, we've done this for 40, 50 years easily and seeing, and we've never felt like um, that was the right move for us. Other distillers absolutely, um, can be the right move for them. Just not what we decide to do, but, but here's kind of the beauty of not cycling a house. You're going to get more than stratifying of temperature of, of humidity top to bottom, more differences within that house because, you know, it's just kind of slowly heating and ramping up and cooling down over the seasons. Well, I can tell you, if you go to a top floor of some of our houses in mid-July, 
you're easily going to hit 105, you know, maybe 110 degrees when, when it's really in the, in the heart of our summers here. Um, you could go down to the bottom floor of that same house, just go down six, seven floors, and, and it could be 85. I mean, you're talking almost a 30 degree swing in the house. Um, and so you can then imagine the different environment and, and that impact that it's going to have on those barrels. And so single barrel whiskeys, all of these have been pulled from the top floor of our houses. Now, some of our warehouses are only four stories. Some are seven, some are even nine. Um, taller is not always better. It's not always hotter. In fact, some of our houses that give us our darkest whiskeys are only four floors. Right. And, and even make quite a bit darker whiskey than seven, seven floors. You know, a lot of it has to do, I think, with sunlight exposure, wh where those houses are located. Um, you know, some of them are, are kind of tucked back in our hills with with trees, you know, around, you know, kind of sitting back in the into the, the woods. And then others are kind of sitting out in the flat areas that get, you know, all day sunlight, you know, morning um, all the way till night. So mm -hmm. all of these different things are going to create these subtle different environments. Um, but when we put those barrels away, you know, we start tracking them um, and looking at them around around five years um, is where we're going to start considering single barrel. Um, now, these these samples are all from 2015. Um, so we're, we're getting close to that six year mark. I think we've got one that will turn six um, in July. We've got a 15 G22. So that'd be July 22nd. Um, that one will hit six. And then we've got a, the other two are closer to five and a half, which we've got a 15 K10. So that's from November of 2015. And then 15 L10, which would be December 10th, then of 2015. Um, so exactly five and a half pretty much there. Um, all right, almost so what the is day. the, all right. So in addition to age, uh, what are we, what else are we looking at that's different here? Different warehouses? Um, yep. Different drills there, there. used to pull them out. <laughs> that's uh, I can't that's guarantee a, what type of drill that it was. A, Hopefully stainless steel drill bit. Uh, that, should that's be an, uh, that's a inside joke uh, for Chris. <laughs> that, that is. Oh, I, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know, Fred, that we'll ever do anything again to where that story doesn't come up. But, um, <laughs> I let, mean, how, how could just, it not? I don't know how it could. I know. I know. That was, uh, that was interesting. Dr broken drill bits hanging out at the end of a barrel head uh, makes for a very uncomfortable distiller. I can promise you that. Yeah. Um, oh, but but, but nonetheless, uh, the, these samples were, were pulled by our warehousing team, uh, and they're they're very good at getting those uh, those samples pulled. So no no drill bits were harmed during the sampling of these barrels. And what and so. what warehouses uh, are these in? So um, the 15 G22 um, is coming out of barrel house number four on track three. And so that, that's what we would consider 304. We don't, we don't have 304 houses. We have 92. Um, our property is Broker Fred. I know you've, you've been here. You've kind of seen it. Um, you've got the distillery kind of property. We call it track one. Track two is where our main bottling hall is. It's about one and a half miles down the road, maybe two miles down the road. That's where most of our barrel houses are. We've got about 50 houses right there in that location. Um, just honestly, because that's that's as we expanded bottling, you want the barrels near bottling. That's where they're gonna go anyway. And then track three is about another three miles down the road, um, kind of on the Western edge of our county. Um, which, which is kind of one of those big open fields, track three, which is where this one came out of. Um, this is in barrel house four on track three on that. So top floor on 304 is where that came from. On the 15K10, that came out of house 13 on track two. Um, so that's right there, kind of in the, the valleys and the hillsides around our main bottling hall um, on track two. And then on 15L10, it came out of house 29, also on track two. So, so only so track two. Down. So track two because there's more stuff that, that would have gotten less sunlight, right? Than Most the, likely, yes. Yeah, I okay. I, I can pretty well um, guarantee you that the that the 304 that that house is 
it, it really sits in a kind of an open flat field. Um, and, and I know you've been to Lynchburg. There's not many flat areas in Lynchburg. It's very hilly. Um, it, but I can tell you a lot of people love those track three houses. Um, now everybody has their own opinions about this. I don't want to sway you too much. Um, but there is something to the exposure and, and I also think just the wind exposure as well, the airflow right, through there, because yeah. there's nothing really slowing anything down. I mean, it's full sun, full exposure to the wind. Um, you know, you're opening those, those windows and um, really letting the environment impact those barrels. All right, we're all salivating here to crack these open. Uh, what do you say we start with 15K10? You got it, 15K10. And, and just for the record, I have not tasted these. I'm going into these uh, right now, first time with you guys. I didn't want to. Fred, all we got, we got number two, number seven, and number nine on ours. So we don't know any of that information on our barrel. Uh, seven. Thank you. Yeah, that would be seven. I was going to be like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> you had me worried there for a second <laughs> like well there I go again screwing something up <laughs> alright so Nate AJ this is our pick you know so Chris is Chris will is not the type that will use his powers of uh, of of influence here he's a very neutral uh party but if he if he smells something or tastes something that really wows him he'll pop out and say it but this is this is us just kind of picking and collaborating and really thinking about what we would like we'll also be listening to the audience so like so audience as you all are watching if you hear a note that you really like come out of my mouth or aj's or nate's you know, say, oh, my gosh, I really want that. You know, you know, so just chime in or, you know, as much as you want. And, you know, I will tell you, though, here lately, I have I have been very I have been picking up like um, I've been very sensitive to a handful of notes and hmm. they've turned me off in a way that they probably haven't turned me off in the past. So um, I don't think we'll get any of that here. But if I smell it, I'll. I'll, I'll call it out. Boy, that smells, uh, that smells beautiful, actually. <laughs> this is, um, this is something that I would like to just, I, I kind of just want to smell it. This is like the car. This, when you talk about, you would like to have a whiskey car freshener. This is kind of like what I think of. <laughs> I, you know, right away for me, and, and you're right, Fred, I don't like to say too much during these, and you, you know that, we, you know, we've done this before, but um, I want it to be about, I want you guys to have this experience, and I and I don't want to sway anyone, um, but on the nose, I mean, this is really unique, there is kind of an herbaceousness to this um, that, that comes out that is pretty unique, I mean, there is certainly a lot of sweetness and sweet aromatics there, which is really a hallmark Jack Daniels uh you know thing that just typically just explodes out of our glass but um th there's a whole nother layer to this one um you know right off the bat that you know it, it's kind of fun to to kick it off with the first sample that kind of throws that at you yeah and i mean i get like this everything from fresh cut grass to uh you know to some lumber it's really really quite magnificent aj what do you think <clears throat> you know it, it's it's I hate to be cliche-ish, but, um, man, it, it is a Snickers bomb, honestly. I mean, it, it is it's delicious. Like, like a Snickers bar? Sn I, I was going to say Snickers bomb. Okay. In, in a good way. In a good yeah. way. By the way, my favorite my favorite candy bar, I just, I would, uh, back in high school, I would just get one of those things with the Coca-Cola. Mm, Can't do that anymore, Chris. It goes, it, goes, it goes straight to my hips. You have to you have to decide. Do you want whiskey or do you want candy bars? And I chose whiskey. I, I know the feeling well, Fred. I am I am right there with you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Nate, you're up. 
Well, I'm hoping I'm on the right barrel. It is number seven, and I'm getting something a little different. So uh, I'm actually getting a little bit of citrus, a little bit of cherry, um, a slight floral. I definitely can understand the earthy note in there, the kind of a uh, maybe a herb kind of note. Now, that's me tasting it, too, though. That's not just me nosing it. So, And it, it's definitely got a little bit of heat. You know what's interesting is that um, I, I I don't know if any of us called out the one of the patented uh, flavor profiles of, of Jack Daniels and that's banana and I definitely got a banana here on this. Um, it's not as overwhelming as we we've, we've seen sometimes, but all in all, I think this is a really nice this is a really nice uh, barrel. Um, I don't think it's one that's standing out to me as like, ooh, watch out, other guys. I mean, I think this one's, this one's good, um, but I'm curious to see if uh, nine or two, as they are labeled for you all, nine or two will be better. So let's go ahead and uh, rinse our palates out. A lot of comments about um, the uh, uh, whiskey air fresh car air freshener. Uh, mm -hmm. Snoop STP says, uh, "Quote whiskey car air freshener." Hi trooper, like my interior aroma. So uh, you know, it's basically you're getting pulled over and your your car smells like bourbon. That's not good. Uh, bourbon bites asks, "What kind of banana? Bourbon nut bread?" Or candy banana. Uh, I, I would say this is actually like uh, for me. It's just it's like an actual banana. So there's no like, mm -hmm. it's not been turned to anything. It's 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 a banana. So let's see. Uh, yeah, a lot of people, a lot of people digging that that first one. So let's go to number nine now. <laughs> For Chris, that's uh, 15 L10. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I see that. I see that now, the correlation. That's that's the that, that 9 and the, what, 7 and the 2. was well, that That's just how we kind of lined them up and numbered them as we were approving them for quality. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm with you. We're on the same page. So has anybody had a chance at these barrels and rejected them? No, not that I'm aware of. I, I don't know. Um, like I say, I, I, I say I've had these for a while, um, but I've been saving them in my office. And I can promise you nobody's had access to these barrels, period, since then. All right. Um, so uh, that much I do know, I could say. Chris has been a knight guarding these for us. Thank yeah. you, Chris. No, no problem. I, I, You know, that's one thing I can do. <laughs> Uh, you can do a whole hell of a lot more than that. I can tell you that. Hmm. Boy, this is... Uh, this is... I don't know yet. I get... I get a lot of... I get almost like a vanilla Coke on the nose. I don't know why. What kind of Coke? Name. Vanilla, vanilla Coke. Remember those vanilla Cokes? I don't even know if they oh. still sell them. Oh, you're talking about that kind of Coke. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Creamy. You know, so this is um, this is one I want to come back to before I really comment because it's either. Go ahead, AJ. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to say anything on this one yet. What are your thoughts on this one? It's definitely more muted than the first one. Um, so it would have been interesting to actually try this one first. Um, it's it's uh, it's funny. I was going to say RC Cola, right? Mm -hmm. Like if you yeah. compare it to uh, – if you're a cola head, right, and you're comparing it to like Pepsi or Coca-Cola, um, especially being, you know, an Atlantean, um, RC Cola is kind of that muted uh, cola profile. So um, – mm -hmm. and I don't know if it's just – I'm still dealing with the blast from uh, number seven, but um, yeah, it's it's. Um, I think it'll be interesting to try um, the third one and then kind of compare and come back to it. 
Yeah, I, I, I want to come back to it. Um, this is this is a this is one of those that can like be a um, incredible incredible sipper or yes. I, I think this has the potential this is like an incredible sipper that's what I think and it, I, but, I agree but I yeah. but I don't know it doesn't have that it doesn't have that big wow flavor that it doesn't mm-hmm. have like one big like wow flavor it's just kind of everywhere and I think that's kind of how I look at these in comparison whereas like the first glass uh, barrel number seven um, was um, was mighty you know it was it was meaty mighty just had a lot going on uh, one thing that's not on here Chris I don't see the proofs on these um, yeah. do you have a do you have a proof count for us I do um, now my my proof number on these you know like I say or, we, or, we pulled these or samples. would you rather not or would you rather not tell us in fear that that could impact our it'll impact us let us guess at the end. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'll do that. Yeah. I, I think that's a good idea. Um, but I will say this, though, on proof, just in case I forget as we move forward, the proof that I have, you know, we sampled these barrels uh, a couple weeks ago, whenever it was. Remember, this whiskey is still sitting in a barrel in a, in a barrel house. Okay. So okay. we're getting, we are getting evaporation right now. You could have some proof fluctuations. So whichever uh, barrel you pick, uh, I'm just going to make this up. If it's 125 proof, and, and it gets in, you know, by the time we bottle it and everything and it and it drops to 124.8 or something like that, you know, <laughs> that's just kind of the natural uh, evaporation or whatever has happened, sure. uh, you know, in the process of bottling that barrel. Mm-hmm. There, there will be nothing mixed with this, I can assure you. We, we hold the hand of every single barrel that goes through this process and assure the integrity of each barrel. Um, but just know it will probably fluctuate just a little bit between now and the time that the bottles get to you all right well yeah that's good you gotta you gotta have guards on there because you know that lynchburg you know it's pretty hard to get a drink in that town so you know <laughs> you gotta be you gotta you protect know, those barrels uh what all right so yeah. let's go to <laughs> barrel number two or 15 g 22 in case you all are wondering at home this is um, this is what like an official. Uh, this is what it looks like, you know. They, it's so raw now. The lab they don't even do an adhesive on it. They yeah. they do a rubber band. They do a we might want to upgrade that. <laughs> yeah, I I think there's something sexy about this. Now there's a really good chance the rubber band's gonna fall, right? But you know. It's kind of like it, there's something romantic, like with with this, as well as a drill that's 110 years old. So uh, yeah, you know. well, I mean, can you imagine being in a barrel house and pulling samples and dealing with with tape and you know, so the rubber bands you can just pop them off, slide them on, and you know, you're 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 on to the next barrel. Well, and it's also it's also a little bit of like as as technology comes on board for for whiskey, uh, more so now than ever. The old elements still reign supreme, you know. So um, that's still you're still getting extracting samples just like they did in the fifties. Yep. Woo-hoo-hoo. And the the, the the game changed a bit on this one for sure. Oh man! Totally di- All three totally different. All three way different. This is uh. This is coming up with a. This is like opening up a bag of uh, cracker jacks. You know, you just smell all that. Mm. Oh, damn. yeah. There, there's such a, a big butterscotch. Ooh. To me, it's all. It, it, Toasted marshmallow campfire and and, and those sweet caramelly butterscotchy mm. notes, um, mm. you really jump out of this. This is um, this is gorgeous. Just gonna put it out there. This is gorgeous. Holy crap! But is this the one that's about to turn six years old? 
Yes, it'll be six in July. You know, pro I don't know when we would bottle this. Um, I would guess it would be after the fourth of July holiday for us. I don't know that for sure. I don't with bottling. They keep me out of bottling and 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 it's a mutual agreement. I don't I don't <laughs> go to bottling and they don't want me in bottling. <laughs> so everybody's happy. Um, but I would you know I would say this you know it, it would probably get you know middle to the end of July before we'd be ready to even bottle this. So, um, you know, we're, we're pushing six, it'll be six in a month. So. So, uh, a lot of, uh, people, uh, commenting, uh, they're in for the Cracker Jacks, uh, AJ, Nate, what are, what are your thoughts on this one? Well, this one's super sweet compared, I mean, on the nose right out of the gate, I got caramel apple. Um, that's what I get, uh, like a caramel apple, like you get at a carnival kind of thing, a little hint of vanilla. But I also get like a clove or pepper on the end, which I love. It's subtle on the end, but there's a little spice for me just to, uh, coming in that back end. Um, is it, To me, it definitely has uh, a little of everything. And uh, I think when we look at nine, like you said, that's kind of a rocking chair, sit on the porch. Mm -hmm. It's creamy it coats your mouth all the way through it's consistent you could drink that uh probably straight through this is a this is a real treat here for me uh i i would say that this one is uh hits my palate the best uh, of what i prefer at least all right aj what are your what are your thoughts here a lot of people loving the comments about butterscotch and uh and cracker jacks but you you got a vote here which what do you think of this one I, I think it definitely has, you know, the if you're if you're someone that likes oil, right? You like high viscosity, um, mm -hmm. man. This this thing, it's it's a flavor bomb, right? But it it's tricky because it it almost seems like it um it's a punch, right? But it's not as powerful as the first one. Um, but man, it's 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 uh it's sultry in in a, in a sense that you know I'm getting a um. I'm still processing. I'm still processing. That's the complexity of it. That's the beauty of whiskey right there, AJ. You're mm -hmm. you're stumped. I love it. It's so good. I mean, it's it's uh I hesitate to put it in a box, honestly. It's it's uh the finish goes a lot longer than the than the previous two. And it's tough because, you know, I'm getting ready to say cherry cherry cola, but <laughs> I'm like, nah. <laughs> you give it a couple more seconds and uh, it evolves. So um, it, it is a, it's a wild ride. I'll tell you that much. Well, bottom line is we all three like it, but we can't, we can't just go off of that first taste. Let's go through all three again. Um, and, you know, confirm what our favorite is. Uh, and the, while we're doing that, uh, Chris, I've got a question for you in, in the chat from my buddy Jason at the, the Mash and Drum, who has a great YouTube channel. Uh, he asked, um, how fun is it to experiment with the Tennessee Tasters line? It is it is one of the most fun things uh, that, that we do. I, it, you know, I've, I've been in the whiskey industry. You know, I started working here in 2001, uh, so, so 20 years in. And to kind of see where American whiskey has gone, um, you know, from there, from then until now, um, and people wanting to try and experience and discover new things. And, uh, I think back, you know, I mentioned my grandfather when he was, he started working here in 1957 and retired in 1989 as our master distiller. And, and to think, you know, something like trying a new recipe or, or, or you know, experimenting with barrels or, you know, Cooper's wood or anything like that, um, just you wasn't even an option. I mean, the only thing you know we really had was old number seven, and it was allocated uh, until almost 1980. You know, people don't realize 1980 Jack Daniels old number seven was was hard to find, and, and it, it, you know people are pretty shocked when they hear that. Um, and so it's something that I can promise you I do not take for granted. Um, and and I, I can tell you Tennessee Tasters has kind of started to to give us this outlet to kind of test and try different things and you know we've done some really cool barrel reunion experiments where we've sent our barrels that we made and used 
sent them out and brought them home. We, we're working on you know more things with with barrels and our cooperage, and what we can do to drive more flavors. We're also you know we're we're growing corn right here in Lynchburg. We 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 were in our second round of, of doing that. We did over thirty acres a couple of years ago. We got another thirty acres growing now. Um, you know we're looking at heirloom corn that was grown in Tennessee and identified you know, back in the 1800s, specific to this region and this area. Um, and we've got a great local family farmer that's helping us there. Now, you know, a lot of that stuff that we've done is still really young. I mean, two years old in a barrel right now. So it's, you know, it's nowhere near ready. Um, but all of that stuff, you know, that is kind of rolling up into that Tennessee tasters lineup. Um, what we've done in our uh, single barrel special release offerings, you know, last fall we had a, a dynamite barrel proof rye single barrel that hit um, late last fall. Um, you know, yeah, all so of these. Speaking things, of a uh, barrel proof rye, are we going to see more of that? You know, I hope so. I, I, I think we will. I think we will. I, I think that it, it went over so well. Um, but we, I, I think, you know, I need to do some due, due diligence in our team here um, on how we can best offer that, you know, and make sure that we're, we're getting it out in the in the right way, and 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 then additionally, when we started making rye whiskey, we never planned on a barrel proof single barrel version of that. When mm -hmm. when that project initiated, yeah. we started distilling rye whiskey in 2011. And, uh, so you know, you know, the thought was, how do we create you know really the ultimate cocktail rye whiskey it, with our core Jack Daniel's Tennessee rye um, was the goal there, and the 70 percent rye mash bill. Um, to go again with the 12 malt and then 18 corn to create that balance of flavor. Um, and so to start to be able, though, to push the rye into that space of where we felt really good about a special single barrel release, as I said, you know, we really consider single barrel as this sweet spot for us. You know, everything is in harmony. Everything is is checked. You know, you're going to have, you know, some barrels, you know, a little more intense on the back and the spice and the oak. You're going to have some that are a little softer, a little sweeter. You know that's just mother nature that that you know she's going to do at the end of the day she's always going to win you know that's what i tell people um but but i i think the future with what we have coming with different different grain bills different types of whiskeys with our rye we it, it's it's going to be really really fun in the next few years um to really push the flavor of what's coming out of jack and I, i'm going to say something here that i just told a cnn reporter um, I was just interviewed by CNN uh, about the tariffs, which I know it's not anything you like talking about or anybody really likes talking about. But I said that, you know, Jack Daniels is the most important American whiskey because it opens a door for so many brands. And I'll just put this out there to folks. Like, if you all like seeing, if you like seeing these cool things come out of Jack Daniels, you know, think about having a regular you know, uh, regular Jack Daniels on your bar, you know, because that uh, I can guarantee you the the black label sales is what is, is one of the most important needles in all of American whiskey. And if those sales aren't doing well, Chris is probably not going to be able to do the barrel proof uh, rise and some of these things, you know, for, uh, you know, for long. So think about that. But, uh, 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 now, with that being said, I went through and tasted these again, and it's a lot closer than I thought, AJ and Nate. A lot closer. Mm -hmm. uh, barrel number seven. Um, it's it, it's gotten it like I, I don't know what it was, but it just kind of changed. I changed or something, but seven's just a whole different taste to me now. So it's, it's funny you say that because my feeling is that like seven never changed, right? Like my issue was, uh, am I letting seven be the winner just because, you know, I'm so happy to be here and seven was the first one. So I was trying to check my unconscious bias, but honestly, going back through, um, I'm rooting for two, but seven is just, man, it's, it's, it, it had me at hello. Seven and two are neck and neck for me right now, Nate. Yeah, um, I think we can all... it's like, fuck you, uh, it's seven. <laughs> no, no, not necessarily. I just, I, I'm thinking for the people, the masses here, because that's sometimes when you're picking barrels, it's not always what I like. But uh, um, 
you know, the nine, I think we can all agree. I mean, it's a, I would, I could sip on that all day on my porch and it'd be happy, but it is a, a kind of a one or two note, consistent, creamy, kind of front to back. But I agree with the, the, the two and the seven being closer. I, I still feel that most people will like the sweet and the caramel, the caramel punch on, I'm just saying what most people will like, Fred, I think number two. But I, I understand, AJ, where you're at with this other one. It is super unique to me. There's a slight banana on the, the very finish, but it is not – it's a unique – we've, we've picked some of these. I've had a lot of taste of some of these barrels, and to me it's a, it's a unique profile. It's a really unique profile for, for Jack Daniels, I think, especially from the, the front of it. So I don't know. I'd go with two. That's my thought on it. But if you want to get crazy, go seven, and I think uh, – I'm not going to have any problem drinking it. So the I think so uh, AJ are you firmly in the camp of uh, of seven? I'm not. Okay. I um. By the way, I get like a, I just started getting a little. I'm picking up a little bit more smoke, and and two now kind of like a hickoryish. Mm-hmm. Yep. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to chime in there, Fred. I, that, that butterscotch kind of campfire, yeah. I think, and then uh, toasted, almost charred marshmallow smoke. Oh yeah, um, marshmallow smoke. How's that for a descriptor? That's a pretty good. <laughs> it's one. a new one. It's a, good one. <laughs> it's a new one. Yeah. So you know, the, in my opinion, the beauty of number two is that it doesn't um, overpower your palate as much as number seven does and it it's still powerful but yet um it really allows for the complexity of the of the various uh, flavor profiles that come out over time so it's like seven is they're both great but it, it's as i've continued to sip some more i'm actually starting to now the needle's kind of switching towards number two honestly did you guys put any water in these? Have you guys? I know we're not. I mean, I know we're tasting that fruit, but I'm just curious. Chris, what do you usually taste at when you're when you're tasting? Uh, for, for this, for a barrel pick, you know how I would, you know, at, at least advise is try it, go, go into it neat, and I, I would give it at least a couple of rounds through neat. Yeah. Um, and now. Once you do that, if you are a rocks guy, if you are, you know, someone that wants, you know, a splash of water, um, I think with, within reason, yes, certainly do that. If that if that you know that's the way you're going to enjoy this barrel when it gets to your door, do it. I, I, I really, I really have a hard time with telling somebody how to enjoy their whiskey. Right? Everybody does their thing, and you do you at the end of the day. Um, now. For us in doing quality checks here and, and actually approving barrels, we're going to taste these at 40 proof. Mm-hmm. They're, they're going to be cut way, way, way down. But a couple things to remember there. Number one, we don't need that much alcohol really on the nose or on the palate um, because we're looking at 40 to 50 barrels at a time here um, to where we're going in and looking to approve these lots that are up on the top floors. You know, our master panel, there's about 10 or 11 people here that can approve these single barrels. That's it. And so when, when we're dealing with that many at a time, obviously we don't want that high strength alcohol in there because after you've been through, you know, five, six, 10, maybe samples, you know, you're going to be so saturated. You're just going to, you're going to lose everything pretty much. Um, so that's one thing. And then, the, you know, the second thing is when you put that much water in there, you're going to drive. If there's something hidden in there, and, and the alcohol is kind of masking it. Alcohol itself is inherently kind of just sweet. Um, and so, you know, you hit it with that much water, you're going to start driving things out that's going to show its its ugly head at that lower proof. Um, and so once we approve single barrels, they could go into barrel proof production or they could go into our standard 94 proof production, right? We, we would consider the quality of those barrels good enough for either stream. Um, and so, you know, the, these barrels could have just as easily been pushed over onto the 94 proof single barrel select uh, product. I uh, um, I just did a te- side by side with bringing them down considerably improve. Um, no flaw surfaced and just 
more goodness came out of them. Exactly. And, uh, <clears throat> I really love Seven. Seven is a product that I want. This is this is uh, uh, this would be like. I think seven is a personal preference one that um, I find myself kind of a it reminds me of um, a louder than life of Jack Daniels barrel pick I did uh, three or four years ago, and it's very similar. It's just a personal preference, and it, to me, it's like a like a really long Metallica song or. <laughs> Or uh, a set of Slipknot, which everybody thinks is like hard and head banging and stuff, but to me that's a rhythmic and very soothing. Uh, well, two, two has a, you know, two is the is is my high school crush. You know, I couldn't quite ever, you know, come up with the nerve to ask her out, but you know, it just. You, you just like have this overwhelming joy every time you know it you're around it and, and it's it's like there's so much goodness and so much aspiration and two it's like I, I have like this um, like to me two is a beautiful beautiful style uh, and it's a it's 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 it down that sweet path and I don't always want sweet um, and I think I want seven every day. I think I only want two when I'm in a particular mood. So I'm I'm in a I'm in a pickle here. I'm in a pickle. I was I was kind of hoping AJ was going to be was going to pick for me so I wouldn't have to make this decision because he was he was leaning so strongly on the fence there. <clears throat> so I'll say this like. Seven has always been the front runner. I think I was looking at your guys' uh, re you know, reactions to two. It was good, and I was trying. I'm trying to like two, but um. Uh, hey, we're not. We're not. You're not here for us, man. You're here for you. You gotta. You gotta. You, you, gotta, nothing, eh, you gotta speak what you love. I'm just telling the truth. I'm just telling the truth. All right. right? So there, there. I, I think. Um, yeah. No. Listen. Like seven was so good. I had to kind of tamp down my uh my excitement right because i'm like we still got nine and we still have number two mm -hmm. but um and, you know the, it, it's yeah seven is just listen it's it's a it's a it's a powerful barrel so is it seven for you yeah nate i'm sorry buddy i know you were wanting to go uh no. hey i know you want to go no. with two but much, but much like my high school crush, um, I'm not going to be able to have two because I'm going with seven. Uh, I, and I, I think – can can you live with that? It's probably for the best. I, usually what I pick, I would say, uh, yeah, I think uh, seven. Here's the deal. I agree with you, Fred. Like sometimes you want to pick something that hits your profile, hits your palate that is just fantastic for you. And I think you're not going to lose with two or seven. These are fantastic barrels, way above and beyond. I mean, I think everybody's going to be happy with either one. Or, or here's I, a question: Can we get both? Yeah. Chris, can we can we buy both? I thought you were directing that question to me. <laughs> yeah, I. You know, I see what I can do, Fred. You know, I mean, you, I'll, you, do you know a guy? I, I know a guy that that, that <laughs> might might be able to, to help. Um, <laughs> But uh, we'll, I mean, we'll see. I, I think uh, here's my my opinion between the two. They're they're both so so different. Yeah, I mean, that's you, right. You, you, you know, you get that that brown sugar, molasses, butterscotch. Um, you know, and and, and all that kind of nice, kind of charred, smoky oak that comes with it. Um, out of two, right? Yeah, and then seven. You know, that kind of earthy spiciness that I, you know, I, I actually hit it with a little water as well. Um, and, you know, to me, you get almost a mint, you know, you, you call it grassy, um, hay, you know, this 
it's just a really unique it's just very different um it's just yeah. it, i think there's more there's more different characteristics around it being a jack daniels barrel proof uh whiskey that i think i think people would would you know that that maybe even drink jack daniels and our jack daniels fans when they try that they may even at first sip say are you sure that's jack daniels like go check the bottle that you poured out of. you know is that really from jack daniels because i mean that is that that barrel is out there it really pushes into a space that you don't get from our you know our tennessee whiskey grain bill you know something you know you get some of the rye that comes through that's kind of poking out there you know and only eight percent you know a lot of times that doesn't really present itself as powerful as it does in in this in this barrel so you know they're just two very unique barrels um you know if if you have a real interest in both up you know We'll see if we can. Well, talk let's see. To like let's see. Let's see if we can get both, and that way people can buy both and decide on their own yeah. what their favorite is. And and you know maybe you know maybe there's like a you know like a cool little little poll or a, maybe like we can do like a one big <laughs> zoom zoom tasting. We do like a big zoom tasting. You come in uh, and officiate it, Chris, and and um, we'll do do this all over again. And that that would be awesome. I would I would love I, I love getting all of our single barrels in front of people and listening. And, and I, I get so much, Fred. Obviously, you know, you and I have tasted a lot of whiskey in the past, and I, you know, I kind of know, you know, when I start going into barrels uh, with with Fred, I think I, I most of the time I think I can follow you, um, AJ and Nate. You know, it's it, yeah, I can't tell you how much I appreciate listening to how you describe our barrels. Um, it's powerful for me. It's something that I, that trust me, I will take with me and move forward. I love, I love experiencing our whiskeys with, with, with folks. And so I tell you um, what, but, I was, I was impressed with their tasting skills. I mean, I've tasted, I've tasted with Nate before, but never AJ and AJ, man, he brought it. He brought his a game. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. You know, I think as we went through and, and, you know, immediately you, you, you know, sample nine, um, you, you, you said, you know, was muted right away. Um, that was exactly where I was going with that. You know, it was just soft, warm and soft throughout, you know. Um, and then we, you know, quickly shifted gears into the other two. Um, so, yeah, it's it's been fun. I mean, it's hard to it's hard to mess it up when you got good whiskey in front of you, but it's been a lot That's, of fun. That is the truth. Well, so our pick is going to be number seven. If we can buy both, seven and two. And this is a very, very tight one. I know we always say that. Uh, but, uh, this one is, um, uh, legitimately tight. Oh, uh, what about a blend? Could we do a blend of all three of these and play around with that? Or, or are we, uh, are we stuck to the single barrels? We, uh, yeah, we couldn't bottle that as single barrel if we blended them. <laughs> I'm, af I'm afraid the government would have issue with single barrel on the label. Uh, oh, yeah. If we put three or even two barrels together, so fair enough. Fair enough. That that might be even more than something I can accomplish. <laughs> <laughs> well, Chris, it was great having you on. AJ, uh, Nate, thank you all so much for for hanging out with me. And uh, look, we've got you know we we're, we've got a lot of cool stuff ahead with this um, with this program. You know, like I was telling folks, if you all want to get in on the uh, the barrel picks. There is a, there is a, in the description of the YouTube, you can sign up for that newsletter and you'll get email information about the barrel picks. It's not a club per se. It's just me picking barrels uh, with friends uh, for retailers. And then, you know, and you can buy it if you want to, you can buy it if you don't, but there's no like club dues or anything like that. But uh, I think that's going to do it for us here uh nate aj tell us how we can find you on the social medias yes sir uh for me uh it's really pretty simple instagram 5280 whiskey you can go check out our website at 5280 whiskey.com uh facebook is just for our private members from our private society but uh i tried the TikTok for about probably 20 hours and i got rid of that i couldn't handle it it was absolutely out of control so that's where we're at TikTok's tough. Yeah. AJ, are you a TikTok star? 
<laughs> I decided to stay off of TikTok, but uh, you can find me on Instagram at uh, simply at Ashanti Johnson. Right on. And Chris, you are you on social media? I don't know about this. I, I am not on social media, so all, you, you guys all got something on me. <laughs> I've got no room to talk. So um, good for you, man. I don't do social media. Good for you. Well, everybody, thanks for joining. And if you haven't already, click the like button. Uh, become a subscriber or a member. We have nothing but fun here on this channel. And tomorrow, uh, you'll learn about. Uh, I got an uh, episode dropping with Yellow Wolf, where I talk about how I bounce a check to get a tattoo. So. Uh, more on that uh, and other things on the way. Cheers, everybody. Vodka sucks. Cheers, guys.